I took the task to review briefly the history of MDS and to try to predict the future. Uh, the history will be short, not because of the time only, but also because the history of MDS is indeed quite a short history. These are my disclosures, research funding, speakers bureau, and advisory boards. Since uh, we are all aware what we are talking about, but just to make sure that we are talking the same language, just briefly I will mention and remind that we are talking about MDS, which is a clonal bone marrow stem cell diseases, which are characterized by abnormal hematopoiesis. The basis is genetic as well as immune. Anemia is the hallmark. The median age is 74. Incidence increases with age and leukemic transformation occurs in 20 to 60% of the patients. Now, as I said, the history of uh, MDS is relatively short in contrast with diseases such as myeloma, for which we have evidence for hundreds of years. MDS is relatively a young disease, probably 80 year old, young in medical terms. If one reviews the literature, probably we can split it to three eras or three phases. The first one was probably 1938 when Dr. Rhodes was the first one to talk about refractory anemia. The next four decades were characterized by morphology, terminology, and basic characterization. Then the second phase started probably in the 80s of the 20th century by continuing to be based on morphology by also the introduction of more modern tools such as cytogenetics and the beginning of the genetics, still the basic genetics. The biology was better understood, better characterization. We started to talk about prognostication and we also had some treatment modalities in addition to the traditional chemo and the traditional red blood cell transfusions. The third phase is in the 21st century in which modern tools, especially the modern genetics as well as digital tools are introduced. This is just a selected list of terms that you can find in the literature. Very interesting to see from 1938, refractory anemia, preleukemic anemia, preleukemia, refractory anemia with ring sideroblast, till you can see at the bottom, myelodysplastic syndromes, which is the term proposed by the French-American British group led by Dr. John Bennett, who is here with us today. And this is the term that we still use, MDS. Just a short uh, overview on the milestones in the evolution of MDS. It started probably in 1938 with the term refractory anemia proposed by Dr. Rhodes. In 1963, Jack Reinhold from Washington described eight patients in the New England with what he called smoldering acute leukemia. James Lindman and Grover Bugby from Oregon proposed the term pre-leukemia, and then dysmyelopoiesis. As I mentioned, the French, American, British, 1982, with Dr. Bennett as leader, proposed the term FAB, as well as the first FAB classification. Then in the late 80s, we came to know the erythropoietins, Alan Erslev, Eva Hellstrom were the pioneers. In 1997, Dr. Peter Greenberg, who is also here with us, led the group which proposed the first prognostic classification, IPSS, mm -hmm. and then in 2012, the IPSS revised. Later on, there was another, another classification, and we will talk later about the IPSSM, on which you will hear today a lot. Dr. Vardiman, Arber, and others proposed the WHA classification. In 2000 and then in 2006, I was privileged to be a member of the International Working Group led by Bros Chison, and we for the first time proposed criteria for response that allowed us to talk the same language when we evaluate in clinical trials 
as well as daily practice. Alan List and others, Valeria Santini, who is here with us, and uh, others, Pierre Fenou, uh, introduced the lenalidomide mainly to DEL5Q, but also, as Valeria and team showed, also to non-DEL5Q as well. About the same time, we started to use hypomethylating agents, especially decitabine and azacitidine, Dr. Silverman, Dr. Fenou, and others. And about the same time, in the early 21st century, we saw many reports on the genetics of MDS, which really taught us a lot. And here are some names, Yoshida, Rafa Bejar, Papa Emanuel, Torsten Haferlar, Sesio Gava, and others. Obviously, I cannot mention all of them. Then, in 2012, we learned about the pre-MDS states, Peter Valent, Mario Cazola, Luca Malcovati, and we are familiar with the term ICAS sicas Theo De Vite, together with David Bowen, Eva Hellstrom, and others, we together founded the European MDS Group, which collects data on real world, what happens in real world, and taught us several important lessons on the practice of MDS, and you will hear about it today, about some of these studies. We also learned about the ion chelating and the role in MDS, and more recently, luspatercept has been approved as another agent for anemia uh, based on several studies, including the medalist led by Pierre Fenou, Uwe Platzbacher, Alan List, and others. We also learned that probably azacitidine or decitabine is not enough, and we tried to add additional agent. Probably venetoclax is the one that is leading, but several others are also tested, investigated. And more recently, digital tools and AI tools are introduced into practice and probably into trials. And I mentioned here Aziz Nazar, Radakovic, and others. And just not to, to be bored, only in the last year we had three new classifications, the IPSSM led by the international group, led by Eli Papa, Emmanuel, Elsa Bernard, and others and we will talk about it today, as well as the more recent two classifications, the WHO and ICC. And this is a list, again, of uh, some of the terms and some of the uh, descriptions, and this is Dr. John Bennett, who led the FAB group that proposed the term, as well as the first classification. And this is a picture given to me by John, the French-American-British group. Unfortunately, we heard just last week that Dr. Danny Katowski passed away. This is another list of some of the reports, which are, I believe, are masterpiece in the history of MDS. And this is Dr. Peter Greenberg, who is here with us and led the IPSS, IPSSR, as well as many other important studies. And this is the picture of the WHO group in 2016. I have to apologize, and I'm sorry if I fail to recognize the contribution of some other investigators and pioneers which I missed. I apologize. Feel free to comment and to let me know. Maybe next time I can correct it. And this is a list talking about history. This is a list of the International Symposia of the MDS Foundation. You saw it earlier by Dr. Neimer. And just to mention that in May, early May, in Marseille, France, we are going to have the next international meeting, and again, face to face, hopefully. Now, I will turn and uh, devote a couple of minutes to try to talk about the future. And we all learned in the last three years that predicting future is very difficult, in not to say dangerous. But I will take, you know, the, I will dare and I will share with you some sorts, obviously, personal view. I believe that we will use in the next few years more modern tools, especially genetics, as well as artificial intelligence. This will lead definitely to a better understanding of the biology. This will also be more objective, and we will also use less invasive techniques. Our patients demand it, and they're probably right. We will hopefully see more and more 
big collaborative research projects, for example, such as the IPSSM in the basic research, as well as clinical trials, including many more patients than in the past. We will also see data collections of real world, such as the European MDS. Dr. De Vita will present some of this data later on, as well as the American SEER. We will have to deal, we cannot avoid it, to deal with the growing problem of the financial toxicity. We have to find solutions. The approach will be more personal, more accurate treatment, and we will address more and more patient needs in terms such as quality of life, we will hear about it today from Dr. Rina Backstein, as well as patient reported outcomes are becoming more and more common and used. And yes, probably we will be able to diagnose pre-MDS states or to diagnose early by less invasive techniques and to have better prognostication. Some of these have already been proposed by the new classifications. In a more specific uh, way, I would say that in low-risk MDS, we will find better solutions for anemia in addition to the erythropoietin and erythroid stimulating agent and los patters that we will hopefully have novel agents. Some of them are on the way in clinical trials and many of us use them already. Hopefully, we will have successful combinations. I believe that eventually we'll have a better solution from the thrombocytopenia, and the embargo on the current agent will be lifted, as well as novel agents will be introduced. And we will hopefully be able to prevent better disease progression. In the high-risk field, we will probably improve the data of the hypomethylating, which we are aware of, but we want better maybe combinations, we will find hopefully the ideal combination. We will use more and more target therapies. Some of them are, what happened to my, some of them are already used. We will target mutations, hopefully inflammation, as well as immunotherapy, and we will use the international guidelines. And this is my grandson looking at the future. About the financial toxicity, this is what happened to one of my patients who got prescription and went to the pharmacist, and the pharmacist told him that he should not be worried about the side effects, but the price will make him dizzy. And just to remember that Voltaire said that a physician is a man who pours drugs on which he knows little into a body on which he knows less. I think it's not the case anymore. We know better and better, and we will know more. And I think I will stop here, and I will let Dr. Valeria Santini to continue. Thank you.